Good afternoon. My name is Igor Tlatnikov. I'm a co-founder and the president of AlphaPoint. We have some exciting news for you today, uh, but first I'd like to introduce Salil Donde. Salil has been a board advisor to AlphaPoint for the majority of this year and has extensive experience in capital markets. Most recently, Salil was the executive vice president at NASDAQ, where he led the global information services business. <clears throat> this business generated $540 million worth of revenue last year, which accounted for about a quarter of NASDAQ's top line revenue. Also, Salil was the CEO of Lutan Technologies, which he led to an acquisition by Moody's Analytics. And Salil was also the CEO of, of several other companies, including MSB or Marshall & Swift, which was acquired by TPG Capital. Now I'll hand it over to Salil, who will share his view of the current state of capital markets and where we're headed with blockchain technology. Thank you, Igor. Good afternoon. As Igor alluded to, I've been in the capital markets and the financial services space for several years now, including having worked with the Reserve Bank of Australia and the Bank of England as part of their funding for lending program or quantitative easing program, where large financial institutions and banks would come with highly illiquid, difficult to value assets and pledge them at the discount window to borrow money, which they would then lend back into the real economy. I've also worked with uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac here on stateside right after the financial crisis working on their common securitization platform. And during my tenure at NASDAQ, the NASDAQ stock market uh, evolved to being the premier listing venue for exchange-traded funds, and NASDAQ began, uh, became one of the leading smart beta index providers as measured by assets under management. So what I plan to do over the next few minutes is to leverage my experience and my learnings and translate those to what I see as the macro trends in the global economy and where I see some wealth creation opportunities. Ever since the 18th century, people have wanted to have an ownership stake in companies. But owning a then illiquid asset, the company, was very difficult and unaffordable for the common man. In 1790, the Philadelphia Stock Exchange, and shortly thereafter what we now know as the New York Stock Exchange, opened doors and share ownership and stock ownership became mainstream. Shares allow the participation of the masses in the ownership of a otherwise illiquid asset, the company. And did the stock market take off? Over the last couple of hundred years, there has been a significant amount of capital formation and wealth creation. And as we stand here today, the total market capitalization of the top 60 exchanges globally stands at about $69 trillion. But wait a minute. Something incredible is going on right now. If you take a look at the chart on the left, the number of listed companies in the United States is lower today than in 1975. The number of small companies listed on the US markets is in a tailspin. And small companies that used to beat the market routinely no longer do so. And while the number of startups with a value greater than a billion dollars who have gone public has been relatively flat, the number of private venture capital companies with a value greater than a billion dollars has been skyrocketing. And the amount of time from first financing to a liquidity event, a sale or an IPO, is now up to 6.2 years. So what is going on? What has happened over the last few years is that there has been a rush of capital into venture capital and private equity funds. And as a result, the small company CEO has a very inexpensive option to raise capital without going to the public markets. So effectively, private is the new public and going to stock exchanges and the listing path is no longer 
the only way for capital formation and wealth creation. This still leaves a problem, though, for the early investors and founders in these startup companies with their highly illiquid shares that they can no longer do, uh, get rid of in a secondary sale or in a distant IPO. Because, as you guys know, you can't use private company stock to buy that fancy car or for that matter, the house, or to put food on the table. But before I start and deal with this illiquidity issue in private company shares, let's look at some other interesting data. After 20 years of rapid growth, while the absolute amount of finances, services, and goods in terms of flows has increased, their relative percentage in the global GDP has declined. Technologies now allow the manufacture, the procurement, and the distribution of goods such as manufacturing equipment, construction equipment, medical devices, and even apparel to be conducted wherever the customer is. These digital platforms allow the customers to be accessed very readily by these companies with a great understanding of the need of the customers. And as you will notice with the chart on the right side, the digital flows across geographies has increased almost 45 times over the period 2005 to 2014. But global wealth generation continues to grow with the US leading in the number of millionaires and total wealth. But the story here is not about the US, nor is it about US leadership. It's about the fact that countries such as Brazil, India, China, Japan, Eurozone are following briskly along. In other words, because of this new digital wave, no country is being left behind. And as the data flows continue to grow, they will drag along the absolute growth of the three key components of wealth, financial assets, real assets, and also debt. And so back to the open issue of the highly illiquid shares of those early founders and investors in startup companies. As these shares get digitized, the founders and the investors will be able to do secondary sales and will find liquidity of their illiquid assets without an IPO and be able to buy the cars and the houses and the, and the food on the table. But thus far, the digitization of these large asset classes, the financial assets which include private capital and currencies, real assets which include real estate and exclusive goods, exclusive goods such as fine wine, art, uh, fancy cars, airplanes, uh, and the like, and debt such as loan and securitized assets. And these assets comprise about 50 trillion plus dollars worth uh, in the world today. The, these have been very difficult to digitize. And unless we find a secure, safe, reliable, consistent way to digitize these assets, the wealth creation that I talked about earlier is not going to happen. So along comes blockchain. Now when I first heard about blockchain a few years ago, now mind it, I'm also a technical person, but when I first heard about blockchain, it blew my mind. I could not comprehend or relate to or understand the concept or the technology. Ask any blockchain expert and he or she will launch into this long explanation uh, from a technical perspective about what blockchain is. But wait, what is blockchain? At the end of the day, blockchain is a database with integrated ability to access the data, communicate and transmit the data to a network community. Said another way, blockchain is at the intersection of secure data storage and secure transmission. Ah, now, with that explanation, I understand it, and I can digitize these assets. So here's why putting these assets on a blockchain makes sense. Shares of a company allowed participation in the ownership 
of a highly illiquid asset, the company itself. We are now going to see the same effect as we digitize these large assets and place them into the mainstream of the global economy. The fractionalizing and the digitizing of these assets will democratize the access and allow citizens of the world to create wealth for themselves. Digitization is to illiquid assets what shares were to companies. To summarize then, the next wave of business capital formation and societal wealth creation is going to come from the digitization of illiquid assets. Much like shares of a company allow participation in the ownership of a then illiquid asset, the company, digitization of these large masses of illiquid assets will facilitate the democratization of access to these assets. Alpha Point is very uniquely positioned with their Alpha Point asset digitization platform to digitize the assets. Alpha Point today digitizes assets, launches markets, and manages the full life cycle of these assets. Alpha Point is about four years old. And in this space, with this technology, Alpha Point is a veteran. With about eight digit revenue backlog, crippling revenues year over year, extensive capital markets experience, Alpha Point counts some of the largest financial institutions amongst its customers. And with a network today of 35 global customers, Alpha Point is poised for significant continued growth. Alpha Point will collaborate and partner with regulators, welcoming and helping facilitate smart regulation. We believe smart regulation is good for business, it's good for trade, good for commerce, and good for clarity. With the macro trends that I just shared with you and the unique positioning of Alpha Point, I am very, very excited to share with you that I have just joined Alpha Point as their new chief executive officer. Our vision is to democratize asset digitization, facilitate wealth creation, and eliminate or reduce the illiquidity discount. Many of you from capital markets know this. When an asset is illiquid, it suffers from an illiquidity discount of close to 20 to 30% because of frictional cost, lack of transparency or price discovery, lack of guarantee of settlement, and a poor understanding of counterparty risk. And we will do this and are doing this by leveraging the Alpha Point Asset Digitization Program using our confidential smart contract manager that we call the trusted virtual machine and allow the transfer of these assets on other supported blockchain networks with a new solution we call ChainBridge. To facilitate our vision, we plan to launch a public blockchain network, the Alpha Point Public Network, to democratize asset digitization. To build this network, we plan to do a token sale in early 2018, geared only for accredited investors. The sale is for a pre-functional protocol token, which will be issued at a later time. The Alpha Point Asset Digitization Platform, the trusted virtual machine, leveraging the new solution ChainBridge, will allow illiquid assets to be made liquid, thereby driving wealth creation. Come chat with us at the booth or follow our progress. Thank you.